Now it's time for more of Southern California's sports fishing voice. Let's talk hook up. Get ready for more of the best fishing information and the hottest tips on improving your angling skills. Let's talk hook up is sponsored in part by Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hook Up. Shimano rods and reels. Fish with the best. Shimano. And now, Southern California's sports fishing voice, the hosts of Let's Talk Hook Up, Pete Gray, Rock Cod, Rick Maxa, and Corey Sanders. Yeah. Uh, Welcome back. Hour number two, Let's Talk Hook Up on the Let's Talk Hook Up app and the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. Pete Gray here, along with Corey Santa today. <clears throat> you just heard from Rick at the PCS show. He's up at the Fisherman's Landing Tackle booth. And what a great show we have going here with Brian Ray and Lori from the American Angler, one of the finest boats in the San Diego Long Range Fleet. Uh, actually uh, steps away here from the world headquarters of Let's Talk Hook Up here right now. Having fun, and wow, what a prize we're giving it away to a lucky caller and a lucky texter today. Two great prizes. Incredible. I mean, we're giving away uh, a five lure pack from AFCO. They're uh, out of their uh, Blue Fever series, which yep. are all super cool. The, yep. the swimmer's by far my favorite. And all those come with heavy-duty hardware. Yeah. You know, the extra the, the real stuff. You don't have to change it you out. You don't have to change anything out. You pay a couple dollars more, but you're not spending five dollars or yeah. more on the other end. You're to, saving money on you, it. You actually are. So yeah. look at those. And we're giving away an April two-day on the American Angler. What? Right? A like a two-day cool. trip in April on the American Angler. How cool is it getting? Yeah. And, and you have spots available on April and May two- and three-day trips, right, Lori? We do, just yeah. Check it out online at AmericanAnglersportFishing.com or yeah. give me a call or text me or email. Or... And how many spots do you have after May? Not a lot. So. Not a lot. That's well, my got, point. We've got, Pretty a, hard couple, to get on we've the got a couple of spots, two spots on an eight-day in June. Wow. We have uh, two spots on an October eight-day and then if, uh, a couple of spots in our, our longer trips in December. December. So mm-hmm. not a lot of space available. So if you want to get a chance to go on one of the finest boats, I've fished the boat several times and love it. No, Just but the I hospitality also... and everything, the food, the, 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 the professionalism of the crew, it's top-notch. They are. They yeah. are. Comfort. And I would say also just check in because we get cancellations. So yes. Not being yeah. smug. Don't be afraid full. to call, yes. Lori. Yep. You're always answering the phone everywhere you are, it seems like. Try to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, hey, it's time uh, to find out what's biting out there, Corey. Right. And it's uh, all about the best quality, easy and out, and the lowest gas prices. And that's Summit Gasoline at the San Diego Sports Arena. Pull up to the expanded Summit Gasoline and get the low, low, low gas and diesel prices for your uh, car, truck, and your trailer boat, too. And uh, they can now accommodate 24 cars, trucks, and a fueling at the same time. Plus 12 diesel pumps. Uh, the Bistro is fully loaded for everything you need a full, for a full day on the water. Plus, you get 100 pounds of free ice. 100 for, pounds know, of free I ice. Can't, I, I, I can't believe it, right? And all you need to do is purchase 35 gallons of fuel, which if you have a boat and a truck, there's times where I've... You know, only put 25 gallons in the boat, but then put the 10 gallons in the truck, yeah. and they accept that for. Oh, they'll take it. It's 100 it's pounds a, of free ice. 100 pounds of free ice. All you all for all yours at the San Diego Sports Arena Summit Gasoline. All right, hey, it's our private motor buddy from Pacific Edge, Captain Mark Wish. Good morning, Mark. Hey, Mark. Hey, good morning, Pete, and Corey, and Brian, and Lori, Ray. Full house, man. Boy, yeah, we do. Boy, you believe how fired up Ricky was with his report there? <laughs> and, and and alive at this hour of the morning, right? Yeah. Yeah, that too. That too. Well, I'm going to go up there and check it out tomorrow, man. Everybody that's been coming to the store has been up there. It's just, it's just like Ricky. It is raving. It's, uh, that's a great thing. So it's sure nice to have some good weekend weather here for a change, you know, whether you're going up to the show or sitting out on the water. Either way, we got some uh, nice, calm, sunny conditions here for a change. Uh, very few worthy reports this week, you know, due to that weather we had early on. Um, local scene, you know, still pretty much status quo. No real exotic standard mix of the bottom grabbers there, the bass and sheephead, sculpin whitefish like that. Uh, the only bright spot is, is, uh, and, and all winter has been the uh, halibut fishing. A little tougher conditions, uh, this week with the drift either being too slow because of no wind at all or way too fast when the weather was up, but uh, it looks really good for this weekend, so hopefully some guys will get out there. That, that grade of fish, man, there's just a lot of really nice ones. I mean, a lot of good grade, you know, 
eight to 12, 15 pounders, and then a pretty good sprinkle of some really big ones. Uh, quite a number over 30 and one or two over 40 now. So that's uh, fun stuff. Over at the uh, Outer Islands, uh, absolutely nothing from Nick to SBI or San Clemente Island. Uh, just no coverage. You know, the weather's an issue this time of year for sure. Uh, Catalina, now you got to keep a close eye on that island, guys. You know, it's getting towards actual springtime conditions, you know, for the stretch of weather. They were really straightening out. One of our good customers was over there a little bit ago with his brand-new boat there and just walloped the yellows. That's what got Dave Hansen all fired up last weekend. <laughs> um, but two different spots, two totally different grades of fish, ranging from school size fish on the kelp line to uh, tanker grade out there on the bait grounds. Uh, but it was really nice that they found that good spread of fish, and guys that were there day or two later found nothing. So, you know, the fish are around. They're moving around. It just happens at this time of year. Quite a bit of halibut up on the beaches, and, you know, not a whole lot going on on the sea bass scene. There's been some good hits, but nothing recently. But uh, Backside East has been the, the best on the sea bass there. Now, offshore, uh, no private boat reports or as you would expect, between the weather and the distance. But I've got one of my long-time really good fishing buddies, Mike Bouquet, who's out there on the Polaris Supreme as we speak. And uh, he's been texting full speed. I mean, today's communications are just amazing. <laughs> but uh, it's been fun uh, getting the updates. And they definitely had some bad weather to start with, uh, really bad. But, you know, the young kid that runs that boat i've not met it personally but man what a reputation uh, he's a hard charger and they went for it and they did find that good school in the dark like frank had mentioned mike said they hooked 18 to land nine and uh, up to 130 and mike got the 130 as i would expect i fished with him man so many long range trips on royal star and other boats and he's just calm steady and always gets them but he had a he had a classic statement after that night bite in the horrible weather he says, this uh, early spring bluefin fishing, it's not for the faint of heart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, watch your weather for sure. And, uh, of course, yeah. fishdope.com, Danny and the boys, they all have uh, all the good information for you. As things start to bite, you want to pay special attention to fishdope.com this time of year. 30 bucks off a new membership to fishdope.com using the code HOOKUPNOW, lowercase, no space. Hookup now is your $30 code. And, Mark, how do we find you for bait tackle and the finest bait tanks not only the finest but the best yeah 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 well hey and speaking of the best you know we we have that teardrop series which you're familiar with and we just got out of the mold a brand new baby one we, we thought it was going to be 28 gallons looks like it's going to be 26 so we got a little teardrop shaped 26 gallon state-of-the-art tank perfect for 18 parkers and 17 whalers like that and uh, they were on the corner of Bolsa Chica and Edinger and Huntington Beach by the Chevron station there. And the phone number at the store, here you go, 714-840-4262. The website is PacificEdgeTackle.com. And uh, it's time to go fishing, guys. We we actually got a nice week of weather ahead of us. Yeah. And uh, everyone's going to have all their new gear from the show. Man, it's definitely time to go. Time to get out there. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate that report. We'll talk to you next Saturday. Where it's, we're going to get we'll good reports next Saturday. I guarantee you that. More than, more than sure. muscle shucking, I'm sure. Yeah. Back to the PCS show right now. Mr. Mike Lum from Captain Rollo's Kids at Sea. Friends of Rollo's on the line. Good morning, Mike. Hey, Mike. This is one fantastic show, and uh, boy, Rick wasn't exaggerating. Yesterday was fantastic, just like the first day, and um, we are doing a lot of good work here at the Rollo booth, and I wanted to make sure everybody understands that uh, we're going to be giving away six of the most beautiful custom-built rods tomorrow afternoon at the Batson booth. Um, Bill Batson and team donated these beautiful rods to us, and if anybody would like to um, get involved, you buy five of our general raffle tickets. They're ten dollars a piece. So for fifty bucks, you get five of those raffle tickets, and then you get entered in to win one of these six beautiful rods. And we're going to be drawing those live tomorrow at the uh, Bats and Booth. So if you're coming by the show today or tomorrow, stop by the Rollo booth and buy five general raffle tickets, and you'll be entered into that. And as a bonus here at the show, 
Uh, Nomad Lures gave us serial number one of their limited edition Mad Max. We have that serial number one lure on display. And if you buy into the uh, wow. Batson raffle, you're also going to be in, entered into a drawing for that uh, that serial number one Mad Max lure. So that's a that's a really nice thing. Wow, that's pretty cool. And and don't forget, this is just a limited drawing for these five, and they're beautiful rods. You see them at the Rollo booth there. They're really fantastic. You do not need to be present to win at the Batson booth tomorrow when they draw for those rods. And you also get eligible to win $30,000 in prizes that are all going to be drawn coming up April 7th at Day at the Docks. So I want, uh, want the $2,000 exactly right. sum of gas. Sum of gas, yeah. I want okay. that. We all want hey, that one. Yeah. For sure. I, you know, I was... Stuff. I was listening to you guys talk about some of gas a moment ago, and, I, and it occurred to me that with 2,000 gallons of gas from uh, $2,000, rather, uh, of, of, uh, of gas from some of gas, I think that comes out to 1,500 pounds of free ice. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> Please. More ice. All right, well, go see Mike, Tim, and the whole Rollo crew. Uh, you're located kind of in the breezeway between the two halls, right? Yeah, yeah, I think that's the Santa Ana. They call it the Santa Ana room. It's a, it's a breezeway between the two. You're not going to miss us. We're right next to CCA, so you'll get a chance to sign up for the Star Tournament. You'll see the Parker boat they're giving away. Renew your membership and uh, spin the wheel at the Rollo booth, and uh, we're all going to win because uh, because we're getting so much support here, and uh, we appreciate you guys uh, promoting us and coming by. Uh, and picking up these tickets and make, making more kids get out on the water. Yeah, it's just actually it's on the way to go see the snakes and the alligators. So <laughs> <laughs> actually, it is, and uh, actually it is, and that's a very popular attraction here. So even though even though you aren't aren't really into that, uh, the, the kids seem to love it. So, oh, the uh, kids love it. Yeah, have uh, you gone over and hold one of those snakes, Mike? No, I have not. But uh, but I might today. I might today. <laughs> Why not? Go get that. Grab that big python. That would be cool. <laughs> Such Absolutely. a cool thing. All right, Mike. Keep it up. Keep up the good work, Captain Morales. Kids at sea. Uh, buy five today and have a chance to win that number one nomad as well as those one of those uh, bats and rods. You can win all five by when getting five, right? You have well, five. It, it, it's it's six rods, right? So if, rods. if some people are coming up and they're buying they're buying multiples, right? They're buying a hundred dollars worth of tickets, which is two entries into the into the into the bats and drawing, and we're giving away six rods. So you, you're going to have a, a you know, relatively good chance of winning one. But uh, the most important thing is the fifty dollars that you're contributing is going to take more kids on their first ocean fishing trip, and that's why we do all of this, and that's why we encourage everybody to keep supporting it uh, year after year. We're I, I think we're at a hundred, we're over a hundred and fifty thousand kids now wow. since this got Incredible. started back in 1999. Mike, keep up the great work. Appreciate the call this morning. And uh, now we're going to shift gears and head over to C4 Sport Fishing. We're Talk to our buddy Marcos, right? Marcos is holding down the fort while the crew's at the PCS ah, show. Yeah. Good morning, Marcos. Good morning, guys. How's everyone doing? Great. So uh, we got bit by the weather a bit this week again. Um, it's interesting because it was actually we had some nice weather, but out on the ocean I just didn't really want to cooperate. Did get a half day out Wednesday morning. They did catch a yellowtail in there. A one yellowtail, calico bass, still good white fishing, a little bit of sheephead in there. So about the same we've seen. It's like so those yellowtails are really starting to, you know, peak here and there. And finally got one of them on the boat. So hopefully we'll see more of that. They're getting right back out there this morning. We're busy selling tickets right now. They're going to get out there and hopefully see some more of that. Um, besides that, not much locally. We did have the Player Supreme get out. And again, they suffered a bit from the weather. Their three day turned into a two day. But they did catch that first day there. They caught nine bluefin early morning. And those fish were a little bit on the bigger end for what we've seen. Those were in the 80 to 130 pound. Got a report from them this morning. Again, they caught nine this morning. They were in the 40 to 80, so a little bit smaller, but they've got the rest of the day to fish there. And I have a feeling Aliar might stay out a bit longer to try and get a hold of some of those, maybe get one more late night, early morning bite in there. But definitely, you know, check out the website. We've got those half days up there. We've got the tribute going out. They did not get out this weekend, but he made his trip next weekend, leaving Friday night, a definite run for that day and a half trip. Um, his last trip down there, he saw some yellowtail also, so definitely, you know, season's starting to get rolling here. Hopefully the weather cooperates a bit. we get some more boats out there. But check out that website, seaforthlanding.com. Half days. Go San Diego full day starting in May. The tribute has a bunch of day and a half right now on the weekends. Coming up pretty soon, they'll be running midweek trips also. Check out the Polaris Supreme site. I know this trip had some last-second openings still available, so you might be able to get on one of those early season trips there. 
How about you guys call the office? 619-224-3383. Come down, visit us in person, get a burrito or a taco next door, and pick up your MC swim baits, because that's what all of the bluefin are being caught on, is MC swim baits. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. There you go, huh? My number one salesman. <laughs> Checks in the mail. <laughs> hey, Woo! Appreciate that, Marcos. And, uh, of course, the Seaforth booth up at the PCS show. Go by and say hi to a lot of the guys up there. Absolutely. Say hi to the guys up there, you know, get some information, and get out there fishing, you know. It's, it's, it's so early season, a little inconsistent in just getting those trips out because of the weather. One of the tougher February and March we've seen in a while as far as the weather goes. But when they get out there, they're doing pretty well, so definitely hop on a trip. Yeah, and just weeks away from the the rock fish opener too, so we're excited. Yeah, about coming it. up, coming up pretty quick. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Hey, Marcos, appreciate that. We'll talk to you next Saturday. We'll talk to you then, guys. All Wraps right. up our catch report. It right does, right? and that was brought to us by Fisherman's Processing, and. Uh, where you get uh, the premier processing experience. Check out the new and easier online system to book your processing for your long-range trips. Now with the addition of the new team members, Fishman's Processing stays ahead of the rest. And uh, they, they're going to have more same-day capacity and the finest customer service. Stop by their location in Old Town on Taylor Street or check Fishman'sProcessing.com and make your reservations today. Did you see them up at the... No, they weren't there. Okay, yeah, they're not yeah, the they're, yeah, yeah, they're they're busy getting ready right. for the big season for sure. Uh, two one three four three two ten ninety one line open. Let's jump in the phones, Corey. How about John? John Cole from Escondido. Appreciate you joining us this morning. Let's talk hookup, John. Hey, uh, great show as always, guys. Um, and so, just uh, um, I guess a couple questions is uh, um, on uh, uh, American Angler. I, lo- I love long range trips. Never had the opportunity to fish on your boat. Um, what type of um, uh, uh, fish storage is it? Is, uh, does it freeze it? Does it? Are you putting it in the, in, in the chilled water? And, fish handling. Uh, what's your favorite fish handling? Yes. Um, and then, um, what's your favorite length of trip? As far as fish holding goes, you know, we we pretty much from the last I don't know, Brian. What would you say? Fifteen as far, years. Fifteen years. Well, Fifteen years. We, we've pretty much just. Pretty much specifically, just based all of our fish on RSW, mm-hmm. and so basically, you know, we start off and the the, the crew pulls that water down to th- 29, 30 degrees, and we go and get those bigger bluefin. They slide right in there, and pretty much they're just sashimi grade, ready to come out. Suspended animation, almost, mm-hmm. right? What at 29, 30 degrees? How long can a fish be? in there and still be considered fresh. On, on those longer trips that we used to do, 14 and 15 day trips, they would come out beautiful. No ten, problem. 10, day, ten, days, ten later, days later. Yeah. 10 days later, ten wow. Days later, yeah. So you put them in for two or three days. I mean, it's... Oh, two like, or three days. It's it's primo. Yeah. You know, it, no matter what goes in there gets bled. You know, whether it's a white fish or... Oh, anything. really? Everything. Oh, everything. All sizes. Everything. Yeah. I had a friend that was out just this past week Shared some bluefin, and I have to tell you, this early season, cold water, mm. so, fatty so fatty and delicious. It was incredible. Like, yeah. I, I don't know if it's because I haven't had a piece of bluefin in, <laughs> in four or five months, but it was by far, like, the greasiest piece nice. I've had. There, there's, I'm ready. We, You know, there's so many trips, obviously. We unload fish, but it just blows my mind trip yeah. after trip. On how good the quality is every single time they come out of that water. It's just like, are you kidding me? Look at this thing. It's like it was just caught. It's, there, it's really incredible. The fish handling for all the long range fleet today is, no, is it's, state it's, of the art. It's but improved dramatically. Uh, you guys have the reputation, and I'll agree because I've had uh, a lot of fish off of your boat, have the reputation of being one of the tops in the fleet. And uh, it's just. Because you guys care for the it, fish, right? It all goes to the crew. They, those yeah. guys, they're just exceptional. They, they care so much for the fish, and they just such a good job taking care of it, making sure that you know it's the water's the right temperature and gilling gut in the fish and the yeah. whole nine yards. Here, here, here's another thing. If you and and you can't put a price on, you know, sport caught fresh tuna, right? But mm-hmm. let me say this: I was at a local fish market, had lunch this week. Do you know what the price of fresh yellowfin is? Forty-two dollars <laughs> a pound. On. Wow. Forty-two dollars a pound, labeled wild caught wow. yellowfin tuna, fresh. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 
Bridge. Just makes, wrap, makes, just, a, makes a trip to go out and catch fish a, a bargain. Just wrap your mind around fish it. home, right? Yeah. Hey, uh, t- uh, thanks a lot for the call, John. 213-432-1090. Great text here from Brian in Kingsburg. I don't know. That's Northern California? I don't know. Listening on the Let's Talk Hookup app. Good morning. What's a standout fish last season aboard the American Angler? Also, are any anglers successful using the eddy bomb? Uh, as far as... I think Brian should answer the standout fish because he's the one who caught it. Ah. What did we catch? An Escalar. Oh, we, yeah, we caught an Escalar. Escalar. <laughs> On a jig? Yeah, it was, a, it was nighttime. Oh. Nighttime. We got a big... Big open at night time. I, I think the overall last season standout fish to me was the yellowfin tuna that we caught school size. Yeah. And we watched them grow from 25 to 35 pounds when we first started getting them to like our last tri- couple of trips in December. They were now 35 to 50 pounds. Whoa. How and crazy. so same schools. They, it's, they, they the same grow. fish. It's just yeah. like that, that Dorado that was down there at Potato Bank was some of the best Dorado fishing I've ever seen. And being the fastest growing, most prolific fish in the ocean, you could watch them grow per trip. By the end of the trip, there, there were 35, 40 pounders mixed in. Wow. It crazy. Was, it was just unbelievable. Yeah, some so, of the most incredible, great of Dorado. Really? It, it, yeah, that we've seen. So, Brian, as far as like, oh, I caught this big one or this, that, it's, I would say last year's standout fish was just the school fish that we were catching. That they were quality just of that yellowfin, and Corey will attest to that because oh. we had uh, shared a lot of that. Fatty. On my boat. Just the quality of that yellowfin last year, like we can pray for that again yes. this year. It's so, so good. It was so great. Yeah. It had me going offshore. Come on. Yeah. Even Corey. Yeah. So many years we're catching these 12 to 15 pounds. Yeah. Fish are fun and, yeah. and delicious. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but here, Correct me if I'm wrong. Like when you see that, like twelve to fifteen, it doesn't grow to twenty five in a season. Like what? Why? I mean, is it all the anchovy local? I would. I mean, how, how do you equate? Why do you equate that that fish grew so quickly? Oh, I I, I don't know. Like like, like you know, it's it, it's like we said. The more experience we get, the less we know. It's just or the less you realize that we actually knew. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it's one of those things that it's just we were just blessed by that school size fish yeah. last year and. Yeah. The grade of them. It was just unbelievable. Whether it was catching them 40 miles off the beach here or all the way down to the ridge and the rocks, they were just, they were phenomenal. I love it. Wow, that's really great. Well, um, you have a great text there, and uh, we, we have a lot of calls, and I have a, a really fun one. I'm, we're getting so many texts, it's beyond comprehension here. And this one's a little longer than I like to read, but it's classic of many of the texts that we're getting today, and it's from Paul in Fountain Valley. And he says, uh, Pete, Corey, Brian, Lori, Ray, as usual, great show. I just wanted to drop a note to say I have fished the American Angler many times over the years and several times at Guadalupe Island. The first trip I took was captained by Dan Sansom way back when uh, and, and, and on and then on Brian and Sam. I caught my first 100-pound yellowfin at Guadalupe Island and Brian was driving. I still have my American Angler sweatshirt in a result of that catch. I do have to say for some reason it seems to have shrunk in my closet. I really remember the Angler and the five-day trips I took and I got into me longer and longer trips. I thank again for a great show and bring me back memories of the of that, Pete. Thanks for the tickets for the Pacific Coast Sport Fishing Show. I took five year my five year old grandson and son in law to the show yesterday, and my grandson caught his first trout and played over several of the, played with several of the reptiles in the reptile exhibit. So that's a lot of fun. That's but cool. uh, nice. yeah, I mean that's the kind of I mean the people that ride the American Angler. I know in the spot that we run for you, Lori, you say it's kind of like being a part of the American Angler family, and it truly becomes that, right? It feels that way. Yeah, it was good to get to that show with the the last couple of mm-hmm. days and see everybody and reconnect and yeah yeah that, and that's see a lot I think of that was our friends right yeah that was our yeah my favorite anyway where what? where is your booth in, in the show if somebody's we listening were, oh we were at the Point Loma Sport Fishing booth and, okay. and so we got guys up there Patrick's up there today and tomorrow Patrick and Bradley will be up there so these are crew members of yours crew members oh, yeah. yeah 
Okay. Everybody. So they'd be in the Point Loma Sport Fishing yeah. booth. Yeah. Fantastic. Exactly. Which is kind of the the one hall that Ricky is in there. I, it, it, I believe it's the same hall as Ricky. Yeah. yeah it's it the is. same hall. As you walk in, you see Fisherman's mm-hmm. Landing. But uh, I mean, you walk into that hall and it's. All, it's all saltwater stuff, and that's one of the cool things about the PCS show. Is it's mostly saltwater oriented, and um, but you see, you know, Salty Crew over here. You see Dwayne Diego over here, Brandon, the Captain's Concept guys. You see uh, all the long range boats, all the landing uh, uh, booths. Um, you know, it's 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 a pretty special area there. A lot of good stuff. So uh, if you go there, I'm I'm trying to think of the name, but as you walk into the show, Los Alamitos, the Los Alamitos building. As you walk into the show, you'll see. The West Coast Marine booth with the Camus and the Parkers. At the bow of those boats, you walk right into those uh, the Los Alamitos booth. So okay. easy to find. What a cool layout. Yeah, mm-hmm. really cool. All right. Hey, we're going to be right back. You're listening to Southern California Sport Fishing Voice. It's Let's Talk Cook Up on the American Angler. On the American Angler. On the Let's Talk Cook Up on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. This is Pete, and I hear it all the time. That Jim and Mary at Poway Valley Collision are amazing. I took my car to Poway Valley Collision, mentioned Let's Talk Hookup, and they gave us VIP treatment, fixed our car, and even gave us a special price. Believe me when I say Poway Valley Collision is worth the drive from anywhere in the Southland. At some point, your car will need a body repair, and I'm confident in saying it pays to go to Poway Valley Collision. Our listeners can save hundreds of dollars on your next car truck repair. They work with most insurance companies, including Auto Club, MetLife, Wawanisa, and more. All you do is call Jim, Mary, or any of their team members, and they do all the rest. No hassles, just top-notch work and VIP treatment. When you take your car or truck to Poway Valley Collision, the job and experience will be top-notch. Get it fixed right at Poway Valley Collision. 14211 Garden Road in Poway. Check PowayValleyCollision.com. The name that stands out among anglers is Fisherman's Landing, your top choice in local and long-range fishing. Hi, this is Doug Kern. Our hard-working crew will make sure your fishing experience is one to remember. We offer the finest open party trips from one to three days, the best charter boats available, and of course, our world-renowned long-range fleet is second to none. Fisherman's Landing is a full-service operation offering great half-day trips on the Dolphin and full-day open party trips on the spacious and comfortable Liberty. Since we introduced the full-day trips at Fisherman's Landing, the 85-foot Liberty has become a favorite among full-day operations with bunks for your comfort, huge bait capacity, and RSW fish holds to keep your catch fresh. Plus, Liberty has a big modern galley and two interior heads with showers. All our open party trips from half-day, full, or one- to three-day trips can easily be booked online at Fisherman'sLanding.com or give us a call at 619-221-8500. I'll see you at Fisherman's Landing in San Diego. This is Art Taylor of Searcher Sport Fishing. Join Captain Mike Totter, Chef Josh Evans, as a new era begins for Searcher Sport Fishing. Mike and Josh will continue the legacy of excellent customer service, fantastic food, and an amazing crew. Book your fishing adventure now online at searchersportfishing.com or call Celia at 619-226-2403. searchersportfishing.com, 619-226-2403. The -the state-of-the-art, long-range sport fishing vessel, the Independence, delivers the top quality, comfort, and fishability you look for in a long-range boat. Veteran captains Mark Pisano and Paul Strasser built this incredible 112-foot vessel with the most modern technology and luxurious comfort available. Once you go on the Independence, you'll be back. Call Independence Sports Fishing at 619-226-6006 or check independencesportfishing.com. The perfect day is my family and I on the boat, out on the waterway. I love it. Nothing but sun, snacks, fishing, and of course, life jackets for everyone. Save the ones you love. Life jackets save lives. A message from California State Parks Division of Boating and Waterways. All right, welcome back to Let's Talk Hook Up and having so much fun with the American Angler family. And yeah. Dude, giving away a two-day trip. Are you kidding me? Right? On the American Angler. Exactly. Of all things, right? And and also the AFCO, AFCO Blue Fever Series, uh, five lures from that series, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. And you said the swimmer is your favorite, huh? You catch calicos with those? Uh, I did, I think, at Cedros. Yeah. Definitely yellowtail. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh the yeah. Yellows love them. And you could, the smaller one. Yeah. yeah. It'd be great for Smaller calicos. or bigger ones? Well, the bigger ones I was throwing for. Or 
the uh, the yellows. The yellows. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's just it's like the original like wax wing style, like yeah. that kind of a right. swim back mm. and forth, you know, like with the that. right hooks mm-hmm. and everything on it. It's like surface iron esque, but you know. It, 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 I don't know. It's a cool lure. It's worth purchasing. Yeah, for sure. Well, phones are packing up. They want to talk to the gang, so let's jump into it. How about Rich? Rich Combe from Bradley. Good morning, Rich. Hey, good morning, guys. You opened up the show this morning talking about the albacore and how you used to catch them out of Morro Bay. And a lot has changed since the albacore have been around tackle-wise. I got them in uh, 2012 on the Princess, which is no longer around and we didn't have live bait we were catching them on uh on the slide on dart jigs after we'd get a troll fish and those fish taught me that i needed a two-speed reel so went to the show and i got two-speed reel that came with uh, a free load up of, of spectra 60 pound and when we were fishing for the albacore we were using uh, mono and i'm wondering would uh be appropriate to be using the spectra with the a small top shot or a big top shot, and what size would you use, and would you go completely different for uh, for live bait? And uh, uh, do you uh, think uh, they're uh, they're days. Uh, albacore days? You're going to need a, a top shot of monofilament because they, they're soft. And soft now you can pull the hooks. Yeah, they're they're just soft fish. You know, from from filleting fish my my whole life on the Pacific Queen and whatever. We'd be filleting a hundred albacore, and then all of a sudden the one bluefin would slide up on the table, and just it was like touching a rock, like a hard head. It it, yeah. it it's like those albacore are so soft that they're they're a white meat tuna, yeah. and and just everything soft on it. So you're gonna need that shock absorbent if and when they come back. Softer rod too. Softer rod, just everything monofilament, about it, right? the whole gig, yeah. Yeah. I, first th- thing that comes to my mind is a 196. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> like, what do you think, Brian? You think they all come back? Oh, absolutely. Everything's yeah. cyclical. Yeah. Hopefully in our lifetime. Pete. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, for sure. Hey, thanks a lot for the call this morning. And this portion of the show is sponsored by Dana Landing on Mission Bay, your one-stop shop for everything you need for a day on the water. Complete saltwater tackle shop, full deli, licenses, boat rentals, and fishing charters. And when it comes to freshwater tackle, we all know, check out East County Bait and Tackle and Lemon Grove Bait and Tackle, full line of freshwater as well as saltwater tackle all you need and including live bait too dana landings right across from sea world next to the dana launch ramp in mission bay east county bait and tackle at the end of the 67 freeway in maple view and lakeside and lemon grove bait and tackle on broadway and lemon grove check dana at the bottom of that page you'll see links to all uh, all three of those locations and i have a great text here from uh, a lot of calls, a lot. This is another one. Daniel in Santa Barbara, listening to us on the Mightier 1090, that giant signal that booms up all the way up and down the coast. Good morning, guys. I'd like to take my dad out on a trip. What are the bunk rooms like, and are are they all state rooms? So we have 12 state rooms, and there's two and three man rooms. So absolutely, if it's a trip, if it's one of the trips that are in April or May, and we've got room on it for a two man room, absolutely, you'd have your own state room. Yeah. yeah, like you'd be sharing it. Like if you're taking a buddy or something like that, you could ask Lori, hey, are there any of the two man state rooms available? Absolutely. How many three man state rooms, and how many two man out of this? So there's four two mans. That's right. And then the rest are three minutes. The rest are three minutes. Yeah, and you generally take how many people on the boat? So on the longer trips, we take 23, 24. On the shorter trips, we take 28. 28. So on the short, longer trips, everybody gets a two-man statement. Correct. Yeah, okay. It's a great experience, a father-son yeah. experience. It oh, is. Sharing That's my room. favorite. You know, it's just it, it's every time I see the father-son, father-daughter, mother-daughter, it's just what, what, a, what a great way to, you know, it, renew it, the bond or after, make the bond stronger. Yeah, after continue. 20 years, I'm still so excited. If a father and son call up to book a trip, it's oh. still so. The only thing better than that is three generations. When they want a three man <laughs> wow. room because it's grandpa, dad, and oh, wow. grandson, that's that's the best. Yeah. How neat are, is that? Are the three person state rooms larger than the two person state rooms? The bunks are bigger. The I bunks mean, are bigger. None of the rooms are big, but yeah. they're, you know, a couple arm lengths yeah, bigger. Sure. And the bunks are wider. Super comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I love seeing Maddie yesterday. Oh, she's so cute. Taylor and Maddie. Maddie's, what, eight years old and caught eight a 60, 70-pound bluefin. Wow. Oh, cool. And, eight years old. Yeah, and, and I saw her from across. She was, I could see the excitement in her eyes. She's, I cannot wait to come back, Captain Brian. And it's like, 
She wow. was so shy. She was looking over at Brian, but she didn't want to go over there, and she'd look over and then look down. So finally, Brian came up to her. <laughs> oh, so she's cute. She's so hooked. She's right. so hooked. Father, she didn't daughter. even know it. Wow. And the crew, I mean, the, the crew embraces that. I mean, oh, every absolutely. one of you smiling from absolutely. Oh, ear to ear. Yeah. yeah. Super neat, for sure. Um, I have another one here. It's kind of a follow-up to the same thing we were just talking about, so I'll read it. Jay from San Diego says, uh, good morning, everyone. Awesome show. My question is... Uh, Uh, Me and my three buddies are planning on going on a two- to three-day trip this coming May or June, and we're trying to get the schedules aligned. How many people does the American Angler hold on a charter? And also, how are the bunks and sleeping arrangements that we just talked about uh, alike? And also, are the meals included on two- and three-day trips? Yeah, so is he talking about a charter? No, he's talking about just he and his buddies coming and booking a trip. Yeah, Yeah, no, yeah, just... You can do it online or call me, yeah. or text or email. And but the food's all included, meals right? Meals are all included. And so the only thing, if you have a dietary restriction, let me know so I can let the cooks know if they don't eat red meat or anything like that. But it's all included. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's and, and the meals on a if you've never been on a long range trip, the meals are a special event. I, I, it's, I, the only way I can describe yeah, it is it's a, it's not just sitting down and grabbing a hamburger and going. It's a special event. It's an experience. <laughs> yeah, it's an experience. Ray, Ray and Brian kind of sh- shrug their shoulders, yeah. right? But as a passenger, I mean, yeah. and, and Lori is referring to it as a cook because of us going back 40 Number plus years, hands. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, But they're actually chefs. They're chefs. Oh, yes. They're truly really chefs. So yeah. they're really thoughtful, and they'll bring things that they cooked on the trip and give them to me after the trip, and it's delicious. I want always. some of that pasole. Yeah. yeah. It's so good. It's I feel killer. like I'm missing out. Yeah. No, it's like dining at a fine dining restaurant is, at, at every meal. Mm-hmm. No doubt about it. And and then the bunks are super comfortable. The the state rooms are are very comfortable. You would have you, you, like if you brought two of his buddies, you'd have they'd have their own state room. It's really a, a good idea to call yeah. because sometimes if somebody's really tall or if somebody's uh, a larger size body, it's good to know those things so you can put them in the right state room. Yeah, for sure. And what about permits and all that kind of stuff? That's all extra. So uh-huh. a few days before the trip, when these guys, when Brian and Ray tell me what they're doing, then I send an e-blast to everybody on the trip to tell them what what the permits will be if they're going to be in California or Mexico. I, I wait for them to tell me. There you go. Looks like a lot of stuff in the California. A lot of it's going to be yeah. in California. Yeah. 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 Sounds like, which Less is, expensive permits. Yeah, for sure. Well, let's jump back on those jam-packed phones, Corey. Let's do it, Pete. And how about Ryan? Ryan, call from Irvine. Appreciate you joining us this morning, Ryan. Good morning, guys. I just want to start off by saying uh, how much my father and I love the American Angler. Um, he, I got a question for him that he wanted me to ask you guys. He wants to know um, when is he gonna, when are you guys gonna start having those twelve and thirteen day trips? <laughs> it seems like it's evolved, Ryan. What's what's going on, by the way? Um, it's evolved where we're not doing those longer trips. It seems like we do 10 and 11 day trips max, and the days of going down below on 14 and 15 day trips, it, it just seems when we relied upon those trips, there a lot of time fishing didn't happen locally until June, July. Brian? And now that it's happening earlier, it's we're able just to introduce more people to the American Angler and show them a good time by starting April. May versus just taking 36 people out fishing in January, we're able to take hundreds of people out and introduce them to the the the, the sport and and also the boat. You mentioned something earlier, and it was the word cyclical, and we're in a cycle that we have not experienced in any of our lifetimes, and and neither did our grandparents experience this. Yeah. We have the most beautiful bluefin fishery that we have seen in since the Zane Gray era yeah. that is right here in our backyard true, from right. from 10 to 110 miles from Point Loma yeah. it it's our backyard it, literally like it's I, do you, you want 20 to 50 pounders or do you want to go target the <laughs> the 150 to 200 pounders mm. right and We've it's been very fortunate as so a fleet. the the boats have dictated that cycle and and it's been 10 years 10 seasons of it is it 10 or 11 it's season. gotta be close to that yeah right so yeah embrace it man yeah mm-hmm. for sure and go fishing right yeah and and I, I will say this uh, once you go on the American angler 
it's kind of a clever ploy that you guys are putting out there, putting doing these two and three day trips. Because once you go, it's like you're okay. I'm spoiled. I, I, I got to go again. And that's what you see a lot with your passengers. Is uh, Laurie's shaking her head? And you guys are very humble. And I, 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 know, I, but, I but, see uh, the intimidation factor yeah. on people. Oh, we're, I'm going to go on a long range boat. Am I going to fit in? Am I a good caster? And then once they come on the boat and they see how good the guys are and how good the crew is. If the intimidation factor is gone, everyone becomes, you know, more comfortable. Right. And, and and most of the passengers are willing to help and share. And if it's a nighttime jigging thing and a guy is getting them on the 400 gram with rigged a certain way, you're, he's there to share it. And, and, and if you're a, a newcomer or bringing a, a child or a wife or a woman in your life, that's it's it's embraced by not only the crew but the passengers. I, 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 I've worked on several different boats and I've owned a couple different boats. I would have to say our passengers, our regulars that we carry, are the best. There They're the best. We're fortunate to have them and. It's our pleasure to show them a good time and take them fishing. That's cool. Very well, well said. said. Yeah, yeah, for sure. A lot of texts like this. Once again, Tony in Santa Barbara says, can't say enough good things about the American Angler crew, Brian, Ray, Lori, and their fantastic pr- crew. Keep me uh, in the game. Love hearing them impart knowledge on your show. And uh, lots of texts like that. That's that, that's the point I'm trying to get across is you guys have a lot of fans out there. You're doing something right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is coming from a, a firefighter that, that is particularly and help help people his entire life, and it just that's the ultimate compliment. Thanks, Tony. Yeah, yeah. A lot that's of people cool. from Santa Barbara today in the north, right? right? Lots of listening to us on the Mightier 1090 and the app, which is kind of cool. So let's jump back on the phones. Let's do it. How about Chuck? Chuck calling from Dana Point. Good morning, Chuck. Appreciate you joining us. Good morning, guys. Got me all excited. All this Albuquerque talk. You know, it makes me uh, remember the old pink Andy, you know, 12, 15, and 20 pound was the killer for those things. But, you know, uh, the the state rooms are right up my alley because then there's nobody who wants to kill me for snoring all night. So, <laughs> you know, me and my two boys that I go with all the time, they're the only ones that don't give me the dirty lip. Like, who was that? <laughs> but I'm sure you have one that's more insulated than the other one, so I'd have to investigate that part. But round table, everybody there, a couple of you have already caught Albuquerque. Now, if they were biting, say, 100 miles out like they usually are, and we had bluefin 20 miles, which one would you pick? Come on, Corey. Yeah, I, I don't. What do you think, Brian? I mean, that's. <laughs> I'd be fishing bluefin at nighttime and catching albacore in the daytime. There, there it is. I, I, I'll tell you this: when we do get albacore, when it does happen, uh, if the bluefin aren't here, I'm going to miss the bluefin. Are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's it, 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 it's human nature. We, yeah, we always want what we don't have. Right. Everyone, we we have the most epic bluefin fishery right here at our front door. We're talking albacore. Right? <laughs> and, 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 and back in the albacore days, you know, our regulars would be, are we going to be fishing bluefin, you know? And it's like back in the cedrus days, we aren't going back there again. Are we going to catch tuna? Now everyone wants to catch yeah. yellowtails. So I remember it's uh, a good problem to have. 35, uh, 35, 40 years ago, I went fishing with Dick Helgren oh, yeah. on the Oceanside 95 at San Clemente Helgren. Island. And uh, we loaded with squid. For a live squid, and a guy comes up to him and he goes, "Where's the sardine?" <laughs> <laughs> and it was like he kind of looked at the guy and was like, "Really?" <laughs> <laughs> kind of the same thing, right? Yeah. Same idea. Oh, that man. early was it 2000 or that epic yellowfin cow bite, and the boat would be loaded with 200 pounders. It should be nice to have some yellowtail, you know what I mean? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's just human nature. Like yeah, Brian said. human yeah. nature. Yeah, yeah. Sharice yeah. in the Huntington Beach uh, writes, Good morning, everyone. I want to take my first long-range trip this season. How long a trip would you suggest uh, for my first trip and also best time of the year to go? And uh, you guys get a lot of ladies that ride the American a Angler, lot. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, do. Um, what, you have any advice for Sharice? Well, if she's never done this before, my first advice advice would be to start with a half day or a three quarter day just to make sure she's comfortable because once you get on the two or three day trip there's no going back yeah. you know and make sure it's motion you know, sickness yeah just I'd pick start the right weather yeah and for a, a two day trip if i have enough advance we could give her her own room oh wow yeah okay all right or she brings a friend she brings a friend's even better. Even better. And yeah. for me, if, if she's not prone to seasickness, any trip that fits your schedule, exactly. whether it be a 10-day trip, an 8-day trip, yeah. just come on out. I pretty much, if it's a first-timer, I pretty much 
advise them starting with a half day or three quarter day. Yeah. Do you guys agree? That's a motion mm-hmm. sickness. Yeah. yeah, just make sure you're okay on the water. Yeah. But that being said, going on a long range boat on a quality long range boat like the American Angler. It's a different game. You get treated very, very well. Like you guys, you say you treat people like family. It's kind of that attitude. It's 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 a special place to go fishing. Mm-hmm. It, it it it's come around and and uh, more people are or everyone's hip to it. it. It's not how many fish you catch and and all. It's it it's the whole overall experience. You yeah. know, you, it's younger. It's like you got to catch the most. You got to catch the biggest. But it. What it comes down to, it's it's the whole experience. The experience, and no matter the volume, at the end of the trip, you're bringing home a harvest of some kind, right? Yeah, and yeah. yeah. right. It, that that's the beauty of it, and and the American Angler family, and uh, and most of our long range family boats cater to that kind of an experience, right? I mean, that's it, it's the, the whole beauty. Cap My Lodge, yeah. the yeah. Picachos, yeah. all these places that I've been with Pete. And yeah. yeah, it's it's ultimately it's the whole experience that yeah. that is. You're on vacation. The end. Yeah, you're on vacation. I remember uh, Brian and Viola joined us at Cap My Lodge last year, and I remember uh, driving by Brian and Viola, and they were just sitting there looking. And it was like, what? Well, why aren't you fishing? It's like, you know, we're just taking it in. Yeah, look, look around. <laughs> we're just us. taking it's it in. Look yeah, around us. for and, sure. And, and that's what it's all about. You're going to Queen Charlotte. Queen Charlotte, Queen Charlotte this Safari year. this year. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they're going to clean up all the fish before we get there. <laughs> well, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Hey, let's try and sneak in one more, Brian, and uh, Canyon Country. Uh, just about thirty seconds left, Brian. Are, are you talking Robert? I think. Oh, Robert. Yeah. Excuse me, Robert and Canyon Country. Good morning, Robert. Morning, guys. Absolutely great show as usual. So while you're looking for fish, do you recommend that we troll behind the boat? And if so, what should we be dragging behind the boat? You know, it's it's funny you ask because there there was a probably a couple years, you know, where it was specifically, you know, we're just focused on finding that main school driving around. But, you know, within, you know, just like fishing at for all these years, you know, we, we adapt to different scenarios. And so I would have to say that the, the trolling method has definitely been productive in, in the last year, whether it's those, um, uh, what is it, the, the Mad Max, mm-hmm. you know, for the skiffs. But for, for us, because we don't go as fast, we've been trolling those smaller Halcos. Halcos, Halco. yeah. I, I correct me if I'm wrong, Corey. Maybe you might know the 190s. I think these. Oh, uh, yeah. you're you're think, asking the I wrong guy. So. Okay, yeah, yeah but th- so. those those definitely. With Brian and I, we, you know that we call them free fish because you know there's always freebies. freebies. Freebies when you're trolling, driving around. You yeah, just especially never with know. all that yellowfin around too. You, you know, they, they there, like there's so many times we're driving around where we're we're. we're Looking for that one big school, but we're right. driving by. Sonar. We're driving by bits and pieces here and there. You just never know, and, yeah. and so definitely, if All it were right. me and, and and you had a little bit of time, you know, just why not? Why not? Hey, Throw maybe maybe Robert will win uh, the two day trip. We're gonna find out when we come back on the Listaka Kapap, the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. Get ready for the most exciting sports show of the year. The giant 14th annual Pacific Coast Sport Fishing Tackle Boat and Travel Show. March 7th to the 10th at the OC Fair and Event Center in Costa Mesa. Check out hundreds of sport fishing exhibitors, manufacturers, tackle dealers, fishing boats, and fishing resorts taking up all seven halls at the fairgrounds. 217,000 square feet. Plus fantastic seminars and a free kids trout pond. Back by popular demand, the PCS show also has has freshwater to cover bass and trout. Learn from some of the top names in the sport fishing industry. From catching giant bluefin, swordfish, calico bass, and more. Take advantage of incredible show specials from major tackle retailers and boat dealers. Talk to the top fishing travel destinations for full days Thursday, March 7th to Sunday, March 10th. The 14th Annual Pacific Coast Sport Fishing Tackle Boat and Travel Show at the OC Fair and Event Center in Costa Mesa. Don't miss it. The PCS show is coming, and we will have an awesome display at the show. Hi, this is Doug Kern from Fisherman's Landing Tackle. Check us out in the wildly popular saltwater building at the PCS show at the OC Fairgrounds in Costa Mesa, where we will feature the Shimano lineup of rods, reels, and lures, like Talica reels, Terramar rods, and the hot current sniper lures. And as always, our expert staff will help you select that perfect Shimano setup for the fish you want to pursue. For saltwater tackle at the PCS show, your best shop is the Fisherman's Landing Tackle booth. 
This is Bob Hoots at Costa Sunglasses. Visual signs are a critical part of my fishing program. From bay bass to bluefin, I wear Costa's to see what's out there. Costa's are built with advanced polarization technology with our 580 lens, designed to cut through the sun's glare while providing enhanced color to see more fish. Costa was founded by a group of anglers wanting a high-performance lens for every fishing application. Costa has a West Coast-style frame and lens for your adventures. CostaSunglasses.com. In San Diego, the future belongs to everyone. So Ford engineered the truck of the future for everyone. The Ford F-150, available with a pro-power onboard generator. What a great addition for anglers. There's also a variety of cab configurations for whatever you need to haul. The truck of the future isn't created for just a few. It's created for us who love the ocean and the outdoor life. Ford F-150, test drive one at your local San Diego County Ford dealer today. They'll be glad to hook you up. Hookup! All right, welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup, and so much fun. It goes by so fast, it goes I can't so believe fast. it. Yeah. And we're running out of time. All right, so flip we need, the coin. We need, yeah, go and, and we've got double winners, but go, in, and then we're go, go ahead, just flip it up. So Texter, is that right? Yeah. So Texter is Mark in L.A., and Mark in L.A. wins the, uh, the Blue Afco? Fever Series, yeah. Avco Lure Series, with five of them. So that means our caller... Hills, Hills of Ventura wins the uh, two-day two day trip. trip. How about that? In huh? April, I'm well, the American thank, angler, yeah. man. Thank you guys, and yeah. uh, we'll put you in touch with Lori and make sure you uh, get dialed in on the trip you want to go on that. And uh, thank you guys, and what a great, great, a great show, Brian, Ray. You, guys, you guys are fantastic guys to fish are with. Awesome. I look forward to it. Thanks for having us. Appreciate you coming in, and Lori. If somebody wants to book a trip on the American Angler, how do we do that? Call or text me at 619-223-5414 or email at officeofamericananglersportfishing.com. And then the, you can book online. Online at American but Angler Sport Fishing. And if you see full trips, call, call Lori anyway. and get on the wait list. You, you do magical things for people. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Lori. Thanks, Ray. Thanks, Brian. And thank you, Corey, for being here. And thank you all out there. Thanks to JP for manning the phones and the board there. And thanks to Adam for all he does on that amazing Let's Talk Hookup app. We sure appreciate all of your support out there. And we'll be back tomorrow, 7 to 9 a.m. Don't forget, spring ahead, so it'll be early tomorrow morning. I thought we were over that. Yeah, no, we're here. (laughs) Sean Sullivan, expert photographer and author, will be here tomorrow morning. Going to be a great show, 7 to 9 a.m. We'll see you right back here on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio and the Let's Talk Hookup app.